Hello and welcome and thanks for joining our Frequency and Energy Hour for, I guess, the month of August. Thank you so much for being here and really, really appreciate it. We're about to get started, so we will get everything rolling for you. We're going to talk about Ayurveda today. And the topics are on our um, calendar at GeniusBioFeedback.com. So if you go to GeniusBioFeedback.com, you can see the different topics that we have. Now, give me one second just to get everything nice and pretty here so we can get started. And we are having some difficulty in broadcasting to YouTube Live, so I'm going to have to post it later. Please find my channel under my name, Ariel Policano, and you can see this presentation later. So we're going to be talking today about the Ayurvedic doshas, and um, you will probably be able to figure out what your dosha is after talking about it. It's fun to know the different energies of the, the body, the constitutions, and they give you another perspective about how to work uh, with your client. Now, if you have any questions about the genius, you can go ahead and put them into the chat, and I'll be happy to answer them as we go through the class. So we'll also need some volunteers. And so if you'd like to volunteer for um, some frequencies, to receive some frequencies, um, go ahead and do that in the chat. All right. No matter what I do here, it's giving me just such a, a tough time about getting this onto YouTube. Still not able to do that. Okay, no worries. We are just going to move forward. All right, our trainer, our certified trainer, Benet Benke, she is going to be presenting um, about Lyme disease. Basically, she shares the practitioner courses that I created, and they are naturopathic level classes. So if you've ever wanted to learn about health and wellness from a naturopathic perspective, you would definitely want to check out these courses. You can get one course, you can get the whole bundle of courses. And uh, when you join her, she will go into the courses that I've created and talk about Lyme disease, talk about hidden infections, talk about biofilms. So she will review um, some of the highlights of the course so you can pick up a lot of great knowledge. We also reward you with a free library, and if you attend live, you will get total cellular regeneration, age in reverse activation frequencies as a thank you for joining her at the live class, and we do have a Zoom link for that we're going to share in just a moment. It's also on our events page, so let me just uh, pick this up over here. And we'll get a couple of those things over to you. So do ask your questions about the genius or any topic that you'd like to discuss. Do you have a particular topic in mind that you'd like to talk about? What do you, what questions do you have? We could always take up this topic for another time. So let's go ahead and we will get this link for Benet's class. Okay, one thing that's cool to learn about is actually biofilms. So biofilms are really something interesting that I believe Benet is gonna talk about tomorrow. And biofilms often help a particular pathogen evade the immune system. So it's interesting to learn about what they are and what you can do about them. There are certain types of remedies, for example, um, things like natokinase or serapeptase, which are excellent for helping with um, clearing the biofilms, you basically break them down and that helps to reveal the greater pathogen and makes it available to the immune system so the immune system can detect it. So that has to do with um, hidden infections. So let me just get a couple of things here into the Zoom and we're going to go back to our presentation in a moment. So into the chat, let me just go ahead and give you the, um, here is the link for Binet's class. We'll also share it in the email that will go out today. Here's a link for Benet's class, so go ahead and share it there. Oh, it's not sharing it. There we go. Okay, there is Benet's link. Okay, we got some good questions in here. Thank you very much for your questions. Um, excellent questions here, and thank you for volunteering. Explain what to do, how to, when to do a 15-minute session versus a 30-minute session, and progressive insights. Explain when to click on all versus high. Um, 
Okay, David says, I'm not sure to under, David, don't do, David, thank you for joining us and joining us from North Carolina. What a beautiful state. Um, go ahead and skip the update by choosing later. Don't worry about the update for now because all the bugs are not worked out. So you are going to see like they're going to try to charge you. Just go later. You're not missing anything. There's now an enterprise version outside of the App Store and there's one in the App Store and the one in the App Store hasn't quite gotten up to speed. Um, just a couple of other things here. You can go to our events. If you didn't get the link for today, you can go to our events calendar and everything here. Next week, we're going to talk about something called phytogens, which are energetic stem cell remedies. So join me next week. You can always see by going to our events calendar what's here. So let's go ahead and link this page into the chat. Okay. Yeah, so David, so all updates are always, you're not, you're not going to be charged, but just don't update right now because we don't have those bugs worked out. Uh, we'll never charge you. We're not going to start charging you now, but it's because of a glitch that has to do in the App Store. So one that's outside of the App Store is called the Enterprise version. Just stick with that and you'll be fine. So just go back into your Genius and where it says Update, just say Later, the left side tab, and you will be absolutely fine. Okay, so here is Benet's class tomorrow, August 7th. She's going to talk about Lyme disease, viruses, infections, biofilms, things like that. So you can get that link. In case you missed the link here, you can actually get the link right there. Makes it a lot easier. Okay, we also have a discount coupon. So if you like Ayurveda or what I'm talking about today and you want to get 40% off those libraries, and it also covers a lot of the adrenal and energy libraries. You can use the code AUYR and then the number 40. So if you'd like to get things like the Ayurvedic Marmas, the Ayurvedic Doshas, um, we have Ayurvedic Herbs, things like that. We also have a lot of our adrenal libraries on special, beating burnout, things like that. You can get them for 40% discount. And you do need the coupon code this week, AUYR and then the number 40. All right, so let's go back here and let's talk a little bit about Ayurveda and why is it important. So, you know, I want to talk about Ayurveda because it's similar to acupuncture in the, and Chinese medicine, and that gives us another way to understand the body. And these are different energies. You know, uh, our Western medicine only talks about the body. And things like Ayurveda and the Chinese medicine talk about the energetics of the body, which relates to the work that we do with the genius. So that it really relates to understanding that chi or um, prana, all of, you know, in, in Ayurveda it's more prana, that these things are flowing through the body. And you don't have any type of a corollary in Western medicine. They completely just assert that you're just, you know, you're just a hunk of skin and flesh and muscles. And so that's really the problem with um, just talking about Chinese medicine versus um, Western medicine, Eastern medicine. So when we talk about Ayurveda, the reason we talk about it or want to understand it is because it's another way of describing the energy, which we are always trying to understand the energy as quantum biofeedback practitioners. Okay, so 5,000 year uh, trusted information, knowing about how to look at the body. What's really cool about Ayurveda is it's really about looking at changing the diet or changing the lifestyle. So there are certain dietary food recommendations and certain things that you would be told to do types of exercise or um, just different things you would do in your, you know, staying out of the hot sun, things like that, that would be recommended. So there really were no medicines per se. Of course, there were herbal medicines, there were herbs that were prescribed, but Ayurveda says to do, work with the diet first and then go to the medicines. So you've probably heard of the three doshas. There's kapha, pitta, and vata. And I thought it'd be fun to explore the different doshas as I go through them. If you've never heard of them before, you haven't thought about them in a while, then you will um, see yourself in at least one or two of the doshas. Now, most people are not just one dosha. They're actually a combination of a major dosha and then um, a smaller sub dosha. So you might be a kapha pitta, or you might be a vata, um, a vata, 
vata kapha is what I'm trying to say. So you might have a combination of those within yourself and you'll probably see little shades of the constitution. Knowing your constitution um, it really helps you to make some better decisions as we'll see as we talk about the different doshas. So these are energies that are within the person and most people can sort of fall into these different energies or constitutions. So we're in, you're a kapha, you're a combination of earth and water. So with earth, you start to think about your body, um, weight, and then water, it's like, do you ever feel bloated? You know, is the water element too much? The other things about the kapha constitution is a lot of stability, but they tend to be more cold than warm. They're slow to anger. And so this is a direct opposite of the Pitta constitution, which is going to fly into a rage at, at just the drop of a hat. And so they have different mental, emotional constitutions as well. And then the Kapha person tends to gain weight more easily. So if you've ever had a maybe a Vata friend, your Vata friend is a lean string bean and they can eat the whole meal and it never affects them. They stay just as thin as could be their entire life. And if you're a kapha, you eat uh, one pea or one whatever, one cookie maybe, and all of a sudden you've gained 20 pounds before you know it, that is a kapha constitution. So they tend to have a heavier build, smooth, oily skin, slow metabolism, they gain weight easily, and they're generally in their, in their demeanor, they're calm and grounded. When a kapha is out of balance, they tend to gain weight, they might have so a lot of sinus congestion or cough or cold, things getting caught in their lungs, bronchitis, um, just lots of phlegm. So I, you know, a lot of, I've talked about my potato rice pasta. I don't really recommend dairy for anybody, but dairy, butter, any type of heavy oily food is going to cause a cough, a constitution to be out of balance and is going to cause them to gain weight. They just have a very sort of um, timid metabolism. Uh, they're not going to be able to really, you know, stress out their gut a lot. In general, their they're cold and damp climates will be difficult for kapha constitutions. They should avoid a dairy or heavy congesting food. So that would be like butter, milk, um, obviously rich meats and things like that. Those are congesting to the body. <clears throat> So kapha will have a tendency towards depression, possessiveness, apathy, and in general, they might, when they get it out of balance, it'd be difficult to feel motivated. This is kind of that cool, kind of not, you know, not moving, fatigued, that kind of thing. So that's the kapha constitution. For the kapha constitution, they should be lifting weights. So even if you're a woman, you don't think, oh, I don't want to lift weights. It's actually, if you're kapha, it's really good because um, kaphas need some type of intensity to kind of get things moving. And so running would be good, like high intensity, you know, some type of even um, MMA or some type of, you know, something that really gets the heart moving and is challenging would be good for the kapha constitution. Whereas if you take the pitta constitution, yoga is better for them. And it's not to say any constitution can't do weightlifting or yoga. It's just to bring the constitution into balance. This would be sort of like your, your home run, run swing, the best thing that you could do. Okay. Um, emphasizing warming spices like ginger, cayenne, cinnamon would be very good for kapha constitution and avoiding the heavy foods. Actually, really good foods would be berries, pomegranates, leafy greens, and beets. What's interesting about beets is that they help to improve your circulation. Uh, spicy vegetables, radishes. So radishes are good when you're trying to lose weight. Get some radishes into your salad. Radishes are good for the thyroid and they actually help to stimulate digestion. They help with weight loss. Uh, quinoa is good for the kaphas as opposed to rice. So rice is a bit more heavy. Quinoa is a bit lighter easier to digest, not as many calories. Barley, uh, lentils, black pepper, just another stimulating spice. Probably if you're like a major kapha constitution, you cannot get enough spicy foods. And during the winter, you want to drink that ginger tea. Anything that can kind of warm up the body will be very, very good for kapha. 
Now we're going to go through this sort of quickly and we'll do a session as well where I'll answer your questions. So if you do have other questions about the genius, now is a really good time to ask them. So any questions that you have, I know that we have a couple of questions in there in the chat. I'm going to go back and review those. All right. So if you're a Pitta, you're all about fire and water. If you can think of it as heat, sharpness, intensity, and I, uh, I liken a lot, some of the constitutions a little bit to, I, uh, to um, astrology. And if you think about the Aries, Aries ruled by Mars, right? Aries people tend to be very um, impulsive. And um, this kind of the Pitta in some ways describes them. Now, not all Aries are going to be Pitta constitution, but it's just a way to see some similarities here. So they're going to be very quick to go into a rage or anger. They need to probably work on that. They're more impulsive and they crave coolness or cold. Now the Pitta energy rules the digestion, metabolism and digestion. So Pittas are gonna to tend to have strong, like good acid in their stomach, ability to digest food. The Pitta energy converts food to energy. They tend to have more rashes. So things that are related to heat, you're gonna see more in Pittas. So if you know somebody who's like this, this impulsiveness, they're probably, they're probably rather slender and they're fast moving. They're always doing something sort of like a bird. They're just flittering everywhere. Um, they're, they're probably their weak spot is that their skin, maybe they have eczema or maybe they have acne, something um, because the heat in the body, right, is showing up on the skin. They might be, ex they have excessive sweating or redness. You might see the redness in their face and so they need to be more around things that cool them down. And so foods that cool them down are going to be good for balancing the Pitta constitution. Their energy or the dosha is related to intelligence, courage, determination. They have a medium build. They're not going to be super skinny, but they're going to be, they're going to be more, they're going to, it's going to be easier for them to maintain weight more than the kaphas. They have a strong appetite, strong digestion, sharp intellect, ambitious, your type A personalities, strong drive to achieve. But again, they could be impulsive, so they don't think before they do things. Now their imbalances might be inflammation, heat, right? Acidity, so too much acid in their stomach, it's too much acid, so they get reflux. Diarrhea, loose stools, right? That's another sign of heat in the body. Irritability, anger, frustration, so they need to be cooled down. So good recommendations for kaphas would be cooling foods when they're in season. So cucumber and watermelon are examples of cooling foods, and those are very good also for the kidneys. Avoid spicy foods. So you don't want to invite your pitta friend to the Indian restaurant where they can get all types of spicy food. They're going to need a different type of food for dinner. Even acidic drinks. So you might hear some, some people do really well with rice vinegar or apple cider vinegar. And then you hear other people say, oh, every time I have apple cider vinegar, I, my stomach gets upset. I can't stand it. I can't even stand the smell of it. As so they're probably a pitta constitution. A taking long walks, getting that energy out of their body. That's really, really good. Like walks are very regular. They have a lot of like the rhythm of the body, the rhythm of the earth. Swimming is good, spending time in nature, that's going to help them to unwind and not be so inclined to just fly off the handle. Foods that are good would be pears, apples, leafy greens, zucchini, rice, so they can handle the, the caloric density of the rice. Mung beans, mung beans are interesting to, they're sort of like lentils and they're a little bit less sweet and they're sort of interesting, they're so popular in um, Indian culture and they have a lot of wonderful nutritional benefits. So mung, you know, look up mung beans and start to put them into like a dal or some type of recipe. They're very, very nutritious. Now what's interesting, so the kapha is going to be all about the ginger and the cinnamon and the cayenne, but there are actually spices that are cooling. So even though we say spicy, not all spices are, are heating. So the ones that are cooling are coriander, fennel, turmeric. These are cooling spices. And then the third, so hopefully by now you started to see maybe some of yourself in the different doshas. The third dosha is the vata dosha, the vata dosha. So they are about air and space, or we could say ether, okay? Air, energy, just um, chi. 
So dryness, lightness, cold, irregularity. So they're kind of all over the place. The vata is the mind that is just all lots of thoughts. They say the vata is kind of always in their head and really needs help with grounding. It also is the vata is that skinny string bean. So the person who's just like slender no matter what, then they're very drawn to fat. So they're, you know, you, the kapha constitution can have very, needs a very low fat diet, but the vata apparently could have the higher fat diet and they just remain lean and mean. They seem to be able to just burn it up and they tend to be dry overall. They tend to have a dry constitution, so dry skin, things like that. So vata is about movement, circulation of the blood, the flow of nerve impulses, which is kind of interesting, the movement of muscles and tissues. Their energy is creativity, enthusiasm, and flexibility. They're lean, easy to maintain weight, dry skin, cold hands and feet is going to be very descriptive of a vata, quick, active mind, anxiety. So when they're going to sleep, their mind is go, just going into the whole debate, you know, talk, and that will tend to give them uh, insomnia. So the mind's always going. So the vata dosha, if you find yourself identifying with this, one of the best things you can do is learn about the sesame oil massage. So sesame oil massage is a traditional Ayurvedic practice where right before you take your shower, your bath, you actually do a full body massage. And in, in India, they would include the hair with um, sesame oil. Sesame oil is uh, said to be a sattvic food, a very balancing neutral food that is good for everybody. But in particular, the sesame oil massage for vata really grounds them. The thickness of that oil on the outside of the body helps them to ground. And then you take your shower afterwards. And when you go through your day, you kind of feel the effects of having put that oil on the body. And it can be good for all constitutions. You can just read more online about the benefits of sesame oil massage and just how it can, it can affect you, that sesame oil. Again, you're not taking it in internally, you're putting it on the external part of the body so you're having more lymphatic flow, you're getting some of the benefits of the oil on the exterior part of the body, although some of it does come into the body, but um, it has a very grounding effect. If you've ever done it, uh, try it at least once with a like, warmed up sesame oil and it really gives you a, a different experience of your day from trying it. It's a great practice. Okay, so vata may suffer from constipation, dry skin, jo uh, joint pain, or insomnia, and they might have fear, anxiety. They're very, this is the ADHD, so they're very prone to concentration. Difficulty with concentration is a very vata experience. And oh, sorry about that, but the dosha imbalances uh, good or good things for for vatas to consume. They actually also do well with beets, even though it's not necessarily for circulation. It's water content for the beets. And so this is dosha imbalances, but this is actually good foods for doshas. Um, bananas, avocado, mangoes, sweet potatoes, pumpkin rice, mung beans, kind of good for every dosha. And OK. So I think that's it for the, the doshas. We're going to go into working on a case, and we're also going to answer some of your questions. So I think some of you volunteered if you wanted to volunteer. It doesn't have to be focused on the doshas. We can really focus on anything you want to focus on. So we'll focus on anything that you want to focus on. We'll bring up the genius so we can work with the genius. We'll answer any of your questions. Remember that you can always come here every week and, and, and ask any questions about the genius. We do try to cover um, issues of frequency and energy. We may talk even about different technologies, um, but we always come back to the genius. We'll help you with that, answer your questions, things like that. So um, we'll look at the genius in just a minute, and then we'll take a volunteer. So we've been talking about Ayurveda and the doshas. We do have some libraries on Ayurveda on the website. So if you go to geniusbiofeedback.com, one really cool way to find libraries on the website is just to use the search bar. Hang on, I know that. You can't see that. Um, so if you just go to the search bar right here and you just put in Ayurveda, you'll see 
Okay, we just got this the new one, the Ayurvedic dosha balancing frequencies, but we also have the Marma energetics. These are like sort of the meridians according to Ayurveda. And then we have Ayurvedic herbs if you're interested in those. And what those libraries do is when you bring up all those particular libraries, you're balancing, you're, you're using the energetics of the herb. So you're using the energetics of the herb for in your sessions. Um, all right, so let's go ahead and we're going to get all of your questions answered. Let's see if we can get started here. Just a moment. Let me get this up here. I just want to answer these questions that you might have. Let's see. <clears throat> okay, so there were some questions at the beginning, and we are going to take a volunteer in just a moment. Let's see if we can just answer these questions, and then we'll answer any other questions that you have. Um, all right, perfect. Okay. Can you please explain when to do a 15 minute session versus doing a 30 minute session? All right. So what we've typically said is 15 minutes twice a day, once in the morning, once at night. But um, it, well, the way we designed the, the genius, the way it was in mind was really shorter balancing sessions versus longer. So the more, technically, the more you entrain a particular frequency, the more that you kind of, you know, get that frequency kind of into your energy field. And so from that perspective, you could say more balancing is better. But we don't have all day to balance. And if you think of it like exercise, like when you run around the block and, okay, you or you run for 15 minutes, so if you run for 15 minutes, you probably know that the effects of the, the run are going to affect you the entire day. They don't just affect you while you're on the run. So you can think of balancing like that. You give your body sort of these gentle taps and you let the body take it from there. So you only need a certain amount of balancing time. Some people mentally, they feel better when they balance longer. They feel like it's really maybe because they're focused on it. They feel like and they balance longer. They might balance for 60 minutes or an hour or two hours. And they feel like the longer they just hit, they keep hitting re, or rebalance or hit that timer again, that they're getting more benefit. It's totally fine. It really comes down to a personal preference. So our standard is 30, 15 minutes twice a day will do everything that you need. But if you just generally feel like you need a longer balancing session, then do 30. It's really about entrainment, right? Frequencies and train into your field. Everything around you is constantly entraining. Words being spoken to you, sounds, music, right? The leaders of this world have known for a long time, right? It's called an info war, you know? All of the words are changing you as a person all of the frequencies around you. That's why probably over time you've become more discriminating about what words, even movies or tones, you allow yourself to be a party to, allow yourself to be a part of. The more that you entrain a word, a frequency, a tone, a song, it becomes assimilated into your whole energy field. It becomes a part of you. And so you could argue, well, if I run this frequency all day long, I'll be able to drink it in more. I'll become one with it. And that's certainly a perfectly fine argument. So there's, you know, if, if it's something that you feel like an emergency, like you need to just run it, run it, run it, run it, run it, run it, then, then run it for longer. But we kind of designed this to be sort of the gentle taps and then rest for a while and then come back and do more balancing. Now, there's another question here about the high, medium, and low. So actually what we can do is sort of cheat a little bit here since we don't really have our client up yet. But what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna put all the sulfeggios in and I'm gonna put all the nojis in and I'm gonna put all the chakras in. And let's just demonstrate this. I just wanna to go to progressive insights and so sort of just talk about high, medium, and low. So in the main part of the program, your blues and your reds, which are also highs and lows, show the level of reactivity. They're showing where somebody's out of balance. And so 
those are really the selected frequencies. You want to choose things that are red and blue to balance for today. When you're in progressive insights, things switch around. And the high, medium, and lows are actually the true high, medium, and low. So the low ones are showing here as a lower priority. So for this person, if we had you know our client in there, 396, liberating guilt and fear. 396 is not resonating as high as the crown chakra. So the crown chakra shows a really high affinity. The idea was to be able to take a group of frequencies that you had selected and then do another scan on them to see the highest priority items. That's for your awareness, but it also says, hey, you could just focus all the energy on these high frequency in order to get a better result because we're sort of taking out the superfluous. We're taking out the ones that aren't as important and we're focusing on the ones that are important. Now, you could think like, well, you're not really spending any more energy balancing the other ones, but it's like the 80-20 rule. You know, there's probably 20% of the frequencies that you are choosing at any given time that will help you to get 80% of the benefit. So I've always thought it's a, a lot more elegant, a lot better as a practitioner to kind of choose the highest ones. So if you were choose to run all of them, the way that the frequencies loop when they're playing for the client is um, three times, so it'll be like a three, two, one. So you're getting more time spent on the high priority and less balancing time spent on the low priority items. That's if you select all, it will kind of do that automatically. So they don't all play at once, the high ones play for longer. Does the dosha change for a person at a different time in their life? I think it does. I think you probably have a primary dosha, but I would uh, bet that the phases of, that's a really good thing to talk about, maybe we'll do a part two, because the seasons um, have go through different doshas. So um, sort of the summertime is very pitta, the kapha is the winter time is more kapha. So you need to take that into consideration. So you're leaning into kind of a good thing to kind of expand the conversation. So the phases of life in, of them, in and of themselves, when you're younger, right, you're much more pitta. When you're older, you're more kapha. And I'm sure the vata is somewhere in there as well. And even times of day, at all throughout the day, we're going through the dosha cycles. So there's certain times of day that are more pitta. There's certain times of day that are more vata. And so, and you can look at the phases. And that's why I've always uh, talked about this, where there's a time at night leading up to 1030. And I think, right, if you get to bed right before 1030, you're in a kapha phase of the day. But right at 1030, it goes into, I can't remember if it's a vata or a pitta, I'm just gonna say vata. And so vata, you know, more thoughts and so forth. And so at 10.30, all of a sudden, you can't really go to sleep until midnight. So that sweet spot, if you get into the kapha, you know, time frame. So everything, we're always going through the three doshas. So I'm certain that we also change somewhat due to the ch changes that we go through in, in just the natural process of aging. That's a great question. Okay, my primary dosha is vata. Thank you, Kelly. Thank you for sharing that. Should I, where should I, what should I be concentrating on when dealing with breast cancer? Okay, we could talk about some of that as well. Let's we'll come back to that. It's a very good question about what are some strategies for that. If you have any other questions, go ahead and put them into the chat. We also have a Q&A. So there's a question here. Do the frequencies work on someone without the person listening to them? doing a session remotely without sending a quantic cap. Absolutely. So that is a scalar broadcast, which the genius does this remote broadcasting. So absolutely it works. You can always put a client in and send it remotely. They don't even have to be listening to the frequencies. So I think we had some volunteers here and we'll talk about cancer, breast cancer in just a moment. Okay, let's see what we have here. Okay, Sharon, I guess you were the volunteer, so we'll go with you and we'll bring this back in just a moment. Um, all right, so let's bring you up here. All right, 
promote you to a panelist, see how you're doing. And we'll go through some, think about what, fre what kind of area of frequencies you would like to have. And okay, continue with a new analysis here. Bring this into the frame. Okay, Sharon, how are you? I'm doing great. I'm really enjoying using the uh, genius on me and looking forward to having more opportunities to use it with other people as well. That is absolutely fantastic. Um, so last time you came on, we did work with you, which is absolutely fine. And then I'm um, trying to remember uh, what happened afterwards. Um, did you, did we have you do the detox and nourish? I am doing that. I, in fact, I just enjoyed a, um, hearty soup with potatoes and lots of vegetables. So tell us, or we also, it's also on our website called the potato rice pasta plan. We've given that, we still give that plan out for free and we gifted you the course that goes with it last time. Tell us a little bit about what's happened since then. Oh, well, I was really surprised uh, how much weight I dropped um, within the first three weeks because I had been trying everything and working with my doctor and, and you know, over a year and I just was stuck. I couldn't get past a certain point. And um, I feel a lot lighter and um, not hungry. So it's it's really working well. You, you actually lost some weight, I think, in the last. Yeah, I, yeah. I lost about 10 pounds that in three amazing. weeks. That I was amazing. very, very constipated, too. So and this diet has helped a lot with that. I'm so glad to hear that. I'm so glad that we gifted to you. And you even though it was sort of like, OK, here you go for free, like you took it and you ran with it and you took it seriously. So I'm really happy about that. And, you know, when you do this plan, along with doing the frequencies, the frequencies are going to, you know, work so much better. Mm hmm. Yes, I've been um, putting a lot of the the weight release frequencies in when I um, when I do my sessions as well. That's, that's very very clever, very smart of you. The one thing I'm writing about for my Substack, and I'll have this available for the entire community, is um, some evidence that shows that when we eat a high fat diet, and this could be if you eat a regular Western diet, even if you think it's healthy or organic, it is going to be high fat. It's probably going to be twenty five percent fat or more. And even if you eat, a, you know, plant-based, you know, people might eat a lot of avocado or they might eat a lot of oil, you know, free oil, olive oil, things like that. And people who are doing keto tend to um, trend towards this. When you have the high oil, even just the regular oils, number one, they can be more estrogenic. What they do when you have those oils that they go into your stomach and they go into your bloodstream, they cause the Rouleau effect. So they cause a low oxygen experience as as they work their way through the body. So they're going to lower oxygen and they also affect and decrease the immune system. There's even some evidence that a high fat diet will increase your risk for colon cancer. So I'm working on all of those. And it's really difficult for me as a naturopathic doctor to know all of this, to understand the physiology and to hear that other doctors and nutritionists recommend a keto plan, because when you look at the physiology, it is so detrimental. So Sharon, I'm so grateful that you're having uh, that experience and you're you're benefiting from this. So I'm I'm thrilled to hear that. Is there something? I mm -hmm. Oh, I was just going to say I was one thing I was really surprised about because I was doing a lot of fat, you know, coconut oil and avocado and all the other you know oils, and I just you know cut that out um, and. I thought I'd have a hard time with it. I was air frying, but you know, with air frying, you usually spritz something with a little bit of oil, but I just went cold Turkey on that. And, um, and you know, I'm not missing it. That's really, really fantastic. And you know, the piece that I really wanted to bring out is that for people who come to me often with chronic Lyme or chronic infections, and you know, I'll say to them, like you've had this chronic infection, Ha what if we get you on this plan, this food plan? And I truly believe that one of their biggest stumbling blocks could be the fats that are in their food plan right now. And often like their functional nutritionist and so forth is recommending, hey, let's get you on this keto plan and really 
they're missing the most nutritious foods that will really help them and will help their immune system. So anyway, I'm so glad that you are having this great experience. It's great to see you. Let's go ahead and record your voice and then we'll run some frequencies for you. So I will start recording in three, two, one. I'm recording. Sharon Hopp, A-E-I-O-U, 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 A-E-I-O-U. That's absolutely fantastic. So as we get ready to run some frequencies for you, is there a particular area that we should focus on? Um, I want to say energy. I've been trying to add a lot of um, sleep solutions. I have a job where I work till midnight, so then it takes me time to wind down. Uh, but I, I've noticed that um, I have to take a nap during the day. So there's like chronic f- fatigue involved. And also, when you mentioned Lyme, I notice that comes up a lot when I'm doing scans, and I'm, I'm curious as to why. I haven't had any any ticks around me or anything. Are you saying Lyme shows up on your scan? Yeah, yeah. Let's see if I can back this out, and what we want to do is take our picture. That's a really um, interesting question. I'm, have you seen it in the past couple of weeks? When you've been scanning yourself, say, in the last two weeks, since you've been following the plan, have you also seen it? All right, we'll go ahead and get your smile there. Excellent. Okay. And we'll just flip that over in just a moment. All right. So we go ahead and do that. Okay. So, yeah, when was the last time that you kind of saw that that line was there? Last night. Okay. So it was last night. Do you have do you have chronic fatigue or symptoms of chronic fatigue that you've noticed? Um, yes, I was. In fact, I was going to a naturopathic doctor in my area, and um, he did some testing and found I had um, adren- adrenal exhaustion, which we, you know, it was like an an eight, and we got it way down. But I'm still with my job; it's very stressful and. And I do have a lot of fatigue. All right. When the body is not getting enough oxygen or we're more acidic, then the resonance within the program could show something like Lyme. And so it's not always speaking exactly to the infection, but it might be sort of reverse engineering it, telling us more about the terrain rather than telling us that there is a particular in infection that's one of the things that you really learn about biofeedback is you have to sort of read between the lines for what some of the results are but mostly for you it's been sort of more fatigue yes okay and what kind of movement are you able to get during the day to go for well, a walk? I- i'm not very good at that okay okay <laughs> yeah what, um, you're working till midnight. What time do you start? I start at three o'clock in the three, afternoon. Three midnight. Well, yeah. And I work, I, okay. I work remotely too. So I'm in my home office. Got it. In your home office. Okay. Mm-hmm. What do you, what kind of movement do you enjoy doing? Um, hmm. <laughs> Uh, well, you know, I'm one of these people I tried uh, doing exercise programs and, you know, I did it for six months and I never had that, uh, that feeling of that rush of, uh, um, what is it, um, d- dopamine or something. It, it, never just, it, came. Didn't, it didn't really float your boat. You weren't, in, you weren't too into no. it. I do, no. you, do you have a dog? Uh, no, I don't. Do you go, do you ever go for walks? Um, I'm trying to go back to the gym because we have the area I live in, the roads are terrible for walking. Oh, that's, uh, that's really hard. That's, um, yeah. I know that that, that can be challenging. 
-hmm. Yeah, I would, you know, even if you just did the treadmill and just watched a movie, just watch some Netflix uh, while you're doing it. Um, movement is sort of very, very important to overall health. So, and it's also really important for the health of your heart, cardiovascular conditioning. It helps your lymphatic system. So we want to get something 30 to 60 minutes of movement every single day. It's going to really help you to have a lot more energy and it's really going to help your sleep and as you learn you know if you just do that commit to okay i'm just going to go to the gym i'll just go on the treadmill for 30 minutes and then i'll be done but usually what i don't know if it'll happen for you but usually what happens is you usually feel a little encouraged to do a little bit more so you might want to do a little bit of weightlifting, or you might want to do you know something else that continues to expand that experience but it is incredibly important for overall health you're kind of getting some of the basics, like you've been willing to do the food plan and you've been willing to do the frequencies and now really want to encourage you to, to join that gym and just do, just even if nobody knows you're there, you're just quiet on the treadmill to really do that because it's going to make such a difference to your sleep, to your mood and to your energy. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. All right. I just want to see if we can encourage you in the most positive way here. So um, let's look at things related to energy or adrenal. So let's go ahead and, um, in fact, let's just go to root cause. That's always such a great one. Let's go to the root cause and see what the genius can tell us that we may not know about. And you don't, you don't have any other um, sort of underlying health issues. In general, it sounds like you're overall, you're fairly healthy. Um, well, the, uh, my weight, my, um, uh, I, tend to go into the diabetic range it's come down quite a bit with the with eating properly but and i have uh, sleep apnea so i do have several okay several issues well, okay so just eating the lower fat plan that is going to help to improve your insulin sensitivities tremendously and just also losing weight because mm -hmm. insulin resistance is an is an um, adaptive mechanism to stop human beings from gaining weight. And it was a it's like a really ancient adaptive mechanism that we have, whereas the body says, hey, if you get too large, you won't be able to fight a tiger or run away fast enough. So if you start to get this weight um, at anybody who gains weight no matter what they're eating they're going to have this tendency towards insulin resistance because the body's going to say hey no more weight gain now and so as they shut down the insulin you can't get any energy into the cells and so the person doesn't gain weight so the minute that you stop gaining weight and start losing it you start to reverse some of that insulin resistance so you're doing it very naturally right now which is um, absolutely awesome that you're doing it and the same thing you know with sleep apnea if you lose the pounds the sleep apnea may also begin to diminish something that's really interesting is some of the work that people have done on earthing and sleep apnea mm -hmm. and so that's another thing is you could get one of those earthing mats and i, I have two of them i've oh, got okay, one so under my desk the, they're not doing the trick then so and, something else is going on there yeah the weight yeah. the weight release can really do the trick. So let's keep working on that potato rice pasta and okay. um, plan. I'm going to let you sit back, relax as I continue to do some work on you. But Sharon, I'm so happy to hear of your success. That's absolutely awesome. Thank you. All right. So we'll let you, there we go. All right. And fantastic. So a couple more questions, really good questions coming in. And interesting things here, underlying virus is the root cause. Frontal sinus viral infection. That could be subclinical, like you're not aware that it even ex exists. Chronic adrenal stress, that could be from the midnight. The three to midnight is really hard. It's not as hard as a swing shift where people are working in way into the night, but that's pretty hard because like you said, you probably need a couple of hours to wind down. So you have to do whatever you can to sort of um, to, to compensate for that. The auditory tube, acid reflux, a valve issue, Epstein-Barr virus. That might be something to really look into is the Epstein-Barr virus. Let's go ahead and look at a few more things here. Like um, let's look at the root cause. We want to go body repair codes right here. And then we're going to talk about some of your questions. So small intestine, dental infections, capillary health, skin health, gums, left knee joint, the histamine response muscles are now relaxed let's see ph regulating mechanisms are now restored mitochondria activated human mesenchymal stem cell therapy effects 
DNA completely healed and expressing perfect health. Let's also get some of the um, affirmations in here. So there's some longevity affirmations. Let's get those included as well. Well, this is an interesting one. The natural rhythm of my pineal gland is now restored for restful sleep. Let's see if there's one on the bottom here. The flow to my brain stays clear. I'm able to get the oxygen and produce all the nitric oxide that I need. All right, so there was a question in the Q&A. It says, how do the frequencies work with regards to when you want to remove something from the body like fluoride, when you want to boost something in the body? So to first to remove it, um, to remove it from the body, what you would do is it's all the same concept, okay? The genius is really not telling us if it's high or low, magnesium, fluoride, it's telling us that it's out of balance. So inherent in running the frequencies, you are bringing the body into balance. Now, if you give somebody that fluoride frequency, they might start detoxing or clearing the fluoride from their system. It's energetic, but it isn't physical. I mean, you still want to remember they have to do some physical things. So you may want to do some physical detox to clear it, but the, the there's no technique to really make the genius like clear clear it out. I mean, by running it, you're harmonizing it, and by harmonizing it or bringing it into balance, that inherently you're going to start clearing it from the body. And then with magnesium, again, if it's out of balance, you run the frequencies in frequency world. But if you know you live in a human body and you know that you're very likely to be depleted in magnesium, then you might want to take magnesium. I think it's always best to get nutrition from food. So you would want to eat some more green leafy vegetables in order to get more magnesium into your body. Let's see, spleen cells, adrenal fatigue, muscles are now relaxed, telomeres are powerfully lengthening uh, to create optimal conditions, dental infections are neutralized. My pancreas produces the optimal amount of protease for optimal digestion. So we might be in suboptimal digestion at this time. Um, there's another good question about, so with cancer, we do have specific cancer libraries. We have a cancer course, which is practitioner level two about healing chronic cases, which we talk all about what is cancer. Um, cancer is the body's kind of last ditch effort to, to heal the body surprisingly. We talk all about what that is and what it means in the class. So there's been a deterioration of the systems over time. Now, the best thing that I would do is I would get on the potato rice pasta plan. You want to stop the burden of the protein, which T. Colin Campbell has shown in the China study, increases your risk of cancer when you're eating a high chicken, fish, beef, those high proteins. Even if you're exposed to toxins, you would be less likely to get cancer except when the higher protein meat meats are actually in the diet then people develop the cancer which is crazy also in the face of higher fats you tend to get more cancer and what's really interesting is just higher fat in general sets up a people to have more pr production of estrogen it could be because they're they're retaining more weight. So just by having more weight on your body, you're going to be more estrogenic, whether you're a man or a woman. By losing the weight, you're going to be less estrogenic. And the best way to lose the weight is to lose the fat. The fat you eat is the fat you wear. So we only balanced 24% um, here. That's interesting. So, all right. So, um also thinking about alkalinity. How can that person get more alkaline? So lots of greens. So what we did is we took those principles and we put them into particular libraries so that we could cover all of those bases. So the cancer libraries, which I'll show in just a moment, are really helpful when working with breast cancer. And I think we also have a, a breast health repair kit. And with that one, we actually threw in a bonus of the breast anatomy. It's always important to work on the anatomy of whatever the particular thing is when you're working. So with breast cancer, you want to work on the anatomy of the breast as well. All right. So there was some other question. Um, what does it mean when you're doing a scan? There shows a need to use frequencies to lose weight, 
when the person is already considered to be underweight. You might be referring to the weight release or the weight loss frequencies. There might be frequencies in there that are not really, really are more about balancing the body rather than losing weight. So you have to look at the specific frequencies. Let's go ahead and look at the cancer libraries um, in particular. Now, some of them might light up for, um, for Sharon here, but it doesn't mean that she has cancer in any way. Just, you know, there might be something in her energy field. When you see things in the genius, they are in the energy field. So they may not be in the physical body. They could be the potentiality of something to happen in the future. And that's why we want to clear them out now. So we have cancer affirmations, cutting edge therapies, the digestive panel, liver practices, the immune system. So it goes through these different series of things that would cover all the different systems that contribute to cancer. So that's why it's really helpful. Um, because it is the breakdown of digestion, it is the toxicity of the liver, it's the breakdown in the immune system, because your immune system is hugely important for the prevention of cancer, or if it's developing the, you know, that you break it down and you shut that system down, that happens through something called tumor necrosis factor, part of your immune system, natural killer cells, part of your immune system. So if something comes along, and disables your immune system or compromises your immune system, then you're way more at risk for cancer. It's hard to overcome cancer. So also hormones, right? Estrogens, out of control estrogens are gonna make more breast cancer, more uterine cancer, things like that. And then optimal nutrition, and we have some free of cancer frequency. So this whole system, this works together as a system where you go through one library at a time, and you can either just balance that particular library on quick balance, or you could add it all in to balance it in the main whole tray through progressive insights. So that's what I would do. And then I would also add in emotions. I would add in Bach flower essences. I would read up on the potato rice pasta plan. If you can possibly educate that person about it, it's going to be their best bet. It's going to be the lowest amount of hormones, it's going to be the lowest amount of fat, and it's going to be the most nutritious foods that they could put into their body. Am I using MAC? Frequencies look different in the background of them. Okay, Dr. Jacqueline, thank you for joining us. I'm not sure what you're referring to as MAC. If you want to send me a message or send me an email, ariel at geniusbiofeedback.com certainly can help. And with regards to movement, Suzanne said use a rebounder. That's a really great idea, um, using a rebounder for that. That's a, that's a really fabulous idea. Let's see where we were with the balancing. Try one more rescan here and see what comes up at the top, and then we'll look at the aura, and then we'll sort of wind everything up. I'll answer as many other questions as I can. Oh, this is saying lumbar number two, the gallbladder deficient due to bile flow low, small intestines, complete and optimized assimilation of all foods, now turn, turn to chi for the best health ever. Thyroid hormone is now easily converted from T4 to T3. So when we have liver toxicity or gut toxicity, we don't make active thyroid hormone. Capillary health and flow is now 100% restored. All right, let's see what our other question is, and then we'll go right to the aura. Are you using, oh, MAC, okay, MAC, M-A-C, of course. Frequencies look different, and the background looks different. The background shouldn't look different, so Jacqueline, you can certainly get in touch with me, um, but it, I am using it on a Mac. I am using this on my computer through an M1, M1 chip with a, with a Mac Mini, essentially, but... Um, what really does look different is the Apple version versus the Android version. So if you want to send me some screenshots and tell me what you're referring to, then let me know. But the Android will look different. So just be aware of that. And I didn't know if there was something in particular that you're referring to or something that I can address. Okay, Android, so that answers the question. Okay, yeah, that is confusing. And I've, I've always tried to encourage the developer to get more parity between the two versions for obvious reasons uh, we just haven't achieved it yet but you can certainly um, send me that email and i can forward it to the developer and say you know yeah it's more people that want to see sort of a streamline just a difference seeing the same thing from one platform to the other um, to whatever extent that 
he he would be able to do that. Okay, let's see where our aura is ending up and take any final questions. And then next week we'll be back talking about um, plants as stem cells and something called phytogens. And so you're gonna have a lot of fun talking about these remedies that we can use energetically and how they help us to activate stem cells in the body through plants, which is pretty cool. Um, let's just go ahead and see if I can find this other, let's see where we are. Okay, we've really lightened and brightened the energy here. So it's looking really, really good. And really, really, really cool. Look at the difference here between these auras. We've gone from sort of a dark aura to much, much lighter aura. And look at that heart energy coming through. And you can even hide the avatar. Got some healing on that first chakra. It's looking really, really good. But just we see more vitality, right? So I wouldn't be surprised, Sharon, if you start to have a lot more energy, start to feel a lot better. I wouldn't be surprised um, to hear that. I just want to remind everybody that you can go to our events calendar, geniusbiofeedback.com. You can see the events coming up. And so tomorrow we have Benet's class. She's going to be talking all about Lyme and chronic infections. And then I'll be next week, back next week talking about the phytogens. So it's really cool to kind of hear about the activation of stem, stem cells through different means rather than sort of the way that they have historically been activated. So we're going to do them energetically. And then you can see there's a 40% coupon, A-U-Y-R, sorry, A-Y-U-R, A-Y-U-R, like Ayurveda 40. You can use that coupon at checkout. When you use it at checkout, we have a whole bunch of libraries that you can see um, that are now, anything related to adrena, adrenal or Ayurveda will be on sale for the 40% discount. Thank you everybody for being part of our class today. We will post this now to YouTube. Come back next week to ask any of your questions related to the genius or really any aspect of health that you'd like to talk about. I am a naturopathic doctor, always keen to talk about health topics with you, find the best solutions. And I believe there always are, are some solution, no matter how much of a challenging situation that you're faced with, you can always find a solution. The body knows how to heal itself and when we think about the genius frequencies, we talk about them and say that they remind the body how to heal itself. The body is a self-organizing and self-healing mechanism. We just have to remove the obstacles to cure. All right, everybody, have a fabulous rest of your day, and we'll see you again real soon. Take care. Bye-bye for now.